Hey everybody, welcome back to DeLorean Tech and another Bring a Trailer auction live stream. Today we have two auction live streams. So there's actually, um, this is going to be fun because I don't have to keep going back and forth. Might as well just keep it like right here. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. So we've got the, we keep calling it a Power Wheels, but it actually isn't a Power Wheels, I guess, right? Um, it's some other third party brand, I guess. Yeah, Action Products. Uh, it's a Back to the Future DeLorean time machine. I've seen one in person. They had one at DCS. Remember that? That guy had it uh, on a, on display out in the parking lot. Yeah, I remember vaguely. Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, and then he brought it over to Midwest, and he had it in the in the garage over there as well. So, um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so this actually belonged to Paul Nye, who, as you may know, unfortunately, he passed away uh, about a month or so ago. And um, they, I think his daughter did try to sell this. Um, and now it's here on Bring a Trailer. So it's up to 650. You got 16 minutes to go. So we're going to take a look at this. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. That's interesting. I, I thought it was in California. I didn't know this was Paul's old one. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, you can see the uh, all the memorabilia that it comes with as well here, which is pretty cool. Um, so this, let's see here. The location is Holly Glen, California. So yeah, I don't know if, if RJM 4x4 is actually uh, his daughter or if somebody else is helping uh, sell the... Uh, this 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 DeLorean model um, for them or not, but let's see what we got here. So it works. We've got some videos. Oh, he's got the JRL. He's including the JRL in here as well as part of the auction, but uh, this is a pretty cool... It's not little. It's a pretty cool uh, DeLorean replica, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. I'll do the photos right now. And I know it's not easy. These are not easy to come by. Yeah, they usually sell for like over a thousand dollars. Thousand bucks? Okay. I really like the side profile view because it looks like a DeLorean when you look at it from the side. Yeah. It, but when you look at it from the top, it looks kind of weird because there's no windshield. But yeah, of it's course. kind of a neat, neat thing. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So we'll have to see how much it goes for. It closes out here. I was tempted to bid on it myself because I kind of want one. The problem is <laughs> I uh, I don't have any place to store it. <laughs> Just, yeah. you know. I mean, you can... You could take the uh, the truck and go pick it up. It's, it's probably yeah. like a, a couple hours away or an hour away from you. Yeah, hour, hour and a half, something like that. Uh, if it's in Bakersfield, I don't know where um, Holly Glen is. I need to look at that. <laughs> well, I just took on the map. It said okay. it was near Hawthorne, California. So oh, that's really? Or in SoCal. Yeah. Wow, that's really close then. Okay. Mm hmm. So I'm assuming it's it's Paul Nye's. I only because um, the, the photos looked similar. Mm -hmm. Maybe whoever it is bought it and is now reselling it. <laughs> I don't know. Probably. Or maybe it's just coincidence. Maybe it isn't Paul's. I have maybe. no idea. I thought you knew. I thought. Well, I thought it was. I figured it was. Um, but I could be wrong. Anyway, so this Holly Glen, California. Let's take a look at this. Now you got me curious. Oh, weird. It is near Hawthorne, I guess. Wait a minute. Hawthorne, California. Oh, yeah. That is weird. It's 
So that means it's really close because my cousin lives in, in Hawthorne, actually. Yeah, it's on Hawthorne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hawthorne, Hawthorne. Wait a minute. Doesn't Edwin live in Hawthorne? Edward uh, Pineda, he, he's in Hawthorne, right? Uh, Hawthorne uh, Time Machine. Sure. Yeah. Well, whoever it is, let's find out. Oh, you know what? Maybe it isn't Paul Nice because whoever whoever's selling this, they've got a lot. They've got a lot of different, um, very similar. <laughs> it could be a collector. So maybe I, I stand corrected. They actually have a really cool like Ferrari Formula looking car. So they've got quite a few of these little go-karts here. And a lot of them are selling for a lot of money. 5000 over $5,000, some of these. And he's been, whoever this guy is, has been, and maybe he acquired it from them. I don't know. Or maybe this is a completely different one. Crazy. I had no idea they sold this kind of stuff on Bring a Trailer, but I guess whatever. It is technically a car. <laughs> Even though it's made out of plastic. <laughs> right. Hey, the DeLorean is made out of plastic too, to a certain degree, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So back to the auction. It's at 650 bucks. That's pretty cheap. Hey, if they don't, if it doesn't mm-hmm. go up, I might bid on it because I know these do go over a thousand bucks. And Hawthorne is literally just across town for me. I can go by, visit my cousin, maybe visit Edwin, <laughs> pick it up, you know. Um, you know, 650 bucks. The, the fees wouldn't be too much, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to wa- I'm gonna watch this thing. Let's see what happens. Well, you know what? So we got 11 more minutes. Why don't we take a look at the other DeLorean, the real DeLorean that's up on auction right now. It's an 81 manual transmission it's currently at twenty five thousand. got two days left unfortunately we won't be able to do the live stream on this one because it just isn't compatible with my work schedule anymore <laughs> they keep mm-hmm. scheduling them i think this one ends on what is it tuesday or monday or something let's see here two days from now that is uh, tuesday yeah so tuesday unfortunately that just does not work out for me especially since it's like at 11 in the morning um It'd be great if they, we can get more of these on weekends. And I don't know about you, but I, I feel like there's been uh, a shortage of DeLoreans on Bring a Trailer, right? I mean, there just hasn't been mm-hmm. a whole lot of them, right, uh, recently. Yeah, like people are saying that, oh, even Beverly Hill doesn't have them. Car Club doesn't have any for sale. Very few. Maybe we're reaching the point where... You know, DeLoreans are harder to come by, or maybe there's somebody else out there that's uh, hoarding them all that you know <laughs> don't know about. <laughs> you know, uh, Beverly. If Beverly yeah. Hill, Beverly Hills is a pretty good indicator because they usually have several on hand, and if they don't have uh, any, or if they've only got one or whatever, that's an indicator. You know, and then obviously mm-hmm. bring a trailer. I mean, if you look at uh, the number of auctions we've had this year. So far, um, one, two, three, four. You know, that's like one a month if we're in right. April, um, which is kind of, I don't know. I mean, in December, just December last year, we had three. So, I don't know. Um, November, we had two. October, there was five. <laughs> wow. So, something, something, something's up. Not a whole lot of uh, DeLoreans, but let's take a look at this one here, this 81. <sighs> let's see here. How many miles we got on this thing here? Um, VIN 6. 65,000. 65,000, a good indicator, I always say. Of course, you know, uh, the car world is always about low miles, which on a DeLorean, if you're looking at buying one and driving it, low miles is probably not the way to go, especially when we're talking about 40-plus-year-old vehicle. 65,000 miles. And then, of course, you got to look at the history, right? VIN 6880. So a, a, a very um, um, more more recent VIN, um, later VIN 81 versus uh, mm-hmm. newer VIN. So it's a, closer to an 82, I guess, right? <laughs> right. It has some of the later features like the integrated door straps and things like that okay oh it does interesting 
I'll have to take a look at that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you can see that right here. It's got the integrated door straps, which is more of an 82, 83 feature. And I guess uh, later VIN uh, 81s had that as well. Pretty clean underneath. This is That's... in Missouri, is there? Oh, is it in Missouri? I wonder if Dave knows him. <laughs> is it Dave in Missouri? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I think I think I remember looking at this and I was like, I wonder if this is Dave's car. It's like it's Missouri, right? No, it isn't. <laughs> it's not. No, it's an eighty his is an eighty two. Mm-hmm. I don't recall but, the VIN. It was ten something. Ten five five zero or something like that. Ten five uh Ten five one five, I think. Five one five. Oh yeah, that's about right. Yep, sounds about right. And it was a, an easy to remember VIN. Um, let's see what this guy. There's a lot of like original things going on here. Let's take a look at some of these photos. Faces look pretty decent. Hardly any eyebrowing going on there. <laughs> a little bit. It's always over the high beams. Why is that? I'm, I don't know. I don't. I think it's materials problems and just old plastic urethane. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't play well with time. Right. I think we didn't we like theorize as to why that was. Mainly because there's people, like no support right through there. Right, it's thin. People think that the the head the heat of the headlights does it, but how many how often do you run the high beams constantly? I think it's I think it's more time based. Right, You're, it's a good point. I mean, sixty five thousand miles. Um, you know, maybe they if it's in Missouri and I don't know how long it's been in Missouri, maybe they've been doing a lot of like country driving or and dark roads and they they did use the high beams a lot. I mean, that's a possibility. Um, but I feel like, you know, um, around that area, since it's basically just a box, right? There's like no supports going on. Um, over time with temperature change, you have expansion right. and contraction and stuff. And I think at those points, that's kind of like the weak point throughout the whole fascia mm -hmm. and you know if you've ever studied stress and and structures and things of that nature you can kind of see it right you can kind of tell that's what's going on it's only polyurethane you know so fiberglass a um, little better but uh the rear fascia is also shrink they, they start pulling away from the right. panel so you get like gaps and things so you know oh he's missing a rub strip i might have one more left <laughs> I gave one to Martin. Martin came yeah. over one day and he's like, "Hey, I need a rub strip." And go, "Let me see what I got." I did find some like in the under the carpet in my car. It's kind of weird. That. Yeah. And it was the exact one he needed. It was. It was. It was weird. I think I gave him some like uh, some door struts as well. My the ones that I had before I went to the stainless ones, which were still okay. They weren't the best, mm -hmm. but hey, at least they held the doors up, right? Yeah. The engine bay looks pretty original. Yeah, it's got the original fuel lines and stuff in there, um, which you know obviously would need to be replaced if you're planning on driving this car. Despite what some of these some of these guys here on Bring a Trailer will t will have you believe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, the 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 steering wheel looks like it's seen better days. I don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah, but. You can just put a cover on that and you're good. <laughs> they get kind of sticky anyway. Mine, mine was very sticky. It was kind of gross. Uh, the seat, <laughs> seat covers look pretty good. Um, yeah, they did those. I don't. I'm not sure which ones they are. They don't look like, you know, like the, the original the OE looking yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. They look okay though. I mean, they're not worn down or anything. Um, it looks like they match the uh, center console. Um, pleather or leather or whatever it is uh, pretty good which is mm -hmm. at least in this photo here which is not common um 
doesn't look like it's got the original uh, radio in it, though. Right? That's something else there. It's, it's a cassette. JVC. You know, yeah. like a period cassette deck yeah. of some kind. Right. Hmm, I don't know about that fuel sender. <laughs> you see the the needle is straight up. It's like between the U and the E on fuel. It's just kind of weird. <laughs> so, it's really full of gas. Yeah, it's really full. Yeah, he's he's so it's so full. He's got the uh, the bonnet is full as well. <laughs> uh, the JVC looks kind of cool. It is period correct, so that, that's you know. That's okay. He's probably still got the original, like, you know, uh, you know how the faceplate has the the cutouts for that type of radio? It's probably still there. So you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, about that if you want to go back to a Craig unit. Right. Um, I'm assuming all of the 81s had a Craig. I don't know when they switched over to the ASI. Maybe it, um, in the 82s? 80, 82 sometime. Okay. So some of the eighty twos probably had a Craig as well, right? Yeah, because the car that I sold had a had a Craig in it still. Okay. Well, you know what? Mine had a Craig when I bought it. Mine's an eighty three. <laughs> but well, they documented it. You know, Ed. Right. Yeah, and Ed, right? The Ed. the, the <laughs> inf infamous infamous Ed, uh, Ed Bernstein, um, put that in there. Don't you have the ASI still, though? Yes, I have the ASI, and that's another thing on my list, my very long list of to-do items that are not critical. Uh, I think right now the next thing I need to do is uh, the shift linkage bushings. So I'm planning on doing oh, okay. that. Uh, I already got the set. I got it from Danny. Um, so I'm just going to you know, do that next, film that. Um, that should be pretty cool. Got to do it on a lift, though. I'm not going to... You know, try to get it up on ramps. It's just not going to be easy to film that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And of course, I don't have a lift, <laughs> so I've got to <laughs> head over to. Um, I'm probably going to do it at Charlie's with yeah. Justin, and um, I'll probably do some of the filming, and he and I will do the the swap outs of the bushings some point we were supposed to do it yesterday but uh apparently people are sick right now and we had to re we'll reschedule it's getting bad though man like i've been like I i'm getting kind of nervous <laughs> like you can feel it you can feel it yeah you can feel it man i'm like you know i gotta hold off on on driving it around um extensively because it, it's getting worse that's what prompted me to 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 move forward let's take a look at this uh oh there we go Got a lot of cool stuff with this. Oh, it's got a helmet too. <laughs> it says Great Scott on it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's framed. 159 bucks when it first came out. This kid's having so much fun, he's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, it I is imagine it. parents are kind of concerned. <laughs> it's yeah, is it gonna is it gonna go up in flames? <laughs> We've seen that happen before with real DeLoreans. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, that would not be good. Original well, fuel lines not included. Yeah, exactly. Hey, this sucker's electric. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so oh, twelve hundred bucks. Okay, that that means I'm out of the running on this one. I wasn't gonna bid unless it was at less than a thousand. So it was at twelve hundred bucks. BTTF eighty eight is the winning or the uh, the current high bidder on this. Twelve hundred dollars. A movie fan, I guess, if he has that name. Yeah, yeah. Wow, thirteen forty-five already. 
Well, I know, um, I don't know, you know, and I'm, I'm beginning to think that this is not the same one as Paul Nye's. I thought this was Paul Nye's. I didn't really have a, I didn't really look into it as much, but it could be just another one out there. And that one, I think they listed it for 2000 I don't know if that's sold or not. Um, I kind of, I reached out because I know uh, <clears throat> our buddy Russ Law out in the UK really needs one for his collection. And I offered to kind of maybe try to help him get one. Uh, only mm -hmm. because you know he does need one and he's probably never going to be able to get one i don't know if they even have any out in the in the uk i think this is kind of a u.s only type thing um, yeah it's just that with shipping overseas on a on something this big and this heavy is going to be pretty costly at least 1500 bucks minimum i would think just to ship this thing overseas but i don't know um 1345 got less than a minute to go No reserve. 1345 is not too bad. But we'll see what happens. David Daniel said he used to have one of the kids. Oh, he did. Okay. What happened? Garage sale? <laughs> <laughs> he, said it, he said part of it like broke. The seat, part of the seat broke, so they threw it out. Ah. It's probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, <laughs> he probably should have kept that in there. Um. Well, it's currently up to 2000 bucks. so there you go. Wow. BTTF, 88, he really wants it. Who is that guy? I just, <laughs> I just looked at his, his uh, profile, and he really hasn't, like, won anything. He's just, he, he's been on a Hummer go-kart. Yeah, I see that. A real Hummer. <laughs> and now he's he listed a... Uh, Quadro Shirt Pro. What the heck is that? A snow plow or something? <laughs> Dude, what the heck is that thing? Oh, uh, man. Looks kind of cool, though. Uh, all right. 2000. He's probably going to get it, I would think. Um, at 2000, that's, that's you know, a pretty good price. So what do we got going on here in the chat? Oh, David's online. Hey, David. Yes, we are on the air. <laughs> <laughs> wild the Hedgehog. How's it going, Wild? These are hard to find, actually. Yes, they are. Lauren for life. Going well. Big Sarge, how's it going? Yeah, I should buy it, but 2000 is too much for me right now. And again, I don't have a place to... And if I were to get it, I would probably get it for Russ. Uh, if I can land one cheap. It'd be great because then it would cost him like another fifteen hundred bucks to ship it over there, and it's just. I think he needs to justify it with the wife, that kind of thing. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, this is probably going to end at two thousand, is what I'm thinking. I don't think anybody's going to try to outbid this guy at two thousand for this. Yeah, we got eight seconds or less. Five, four, three, two, one, sold. That's it. 2000 bucks. It's about right. There you go. Hey, congratulations. Not a bad price. It's just kind of coincidental that it popped up at the same time as uh, the one Paul Nye had that his daughter was listing. So I had assumed that they were the same one. But I guess I was wrong on that one. I don't know. Um... So that's kind of cool. I don't know if, if Bring a Killer has sold one of these before. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess you could kind of look at it, right? Um, I, I don't think they have. Um, action products, let's just search. They might have sold a DeLorean with this, but oh. I don't know if it's been separate. Yeah, that's the only one that pops up with the, the, the keywords action products is this one here. So it doesn't look like they've they've ever had this one on there. But yeah, that sounds familiar, though. I, I, I do remember it. Maybe it wasn't on Bring a Trailer. Maybe it was somewhere else where they included this with the sale of the DeLorean. Um, mm -hmm.
Oops. Nope. Can't find anything. Well, yeah. congratulations to the to the winner. He's also getting a bunch of. That's kind of why I thought it was Paul Nice, is because there was a helmet and all this other stuff that, you know, somebody like him would have had all these collectibles too, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, huge Back to the Future fan. And I know he, he um, had a ton of collectibles and stuff. So I don't anyway. remember seeing the actual listing of his, of Paul Nice. It was on Facebook. It was his daughter that was, that had it listed. But anyway, yeah, it's really, really sad about Paul. So, uh, you know, our heart goes out to his family and friends, and we were good friends of his as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, it took us all kind of by surprise, unfortunately. Um, so hope his family's doing well. And uh, don't know what's going to happen with his, his car, though. I, I do remember... There was uh, some uh, somebody local was probably going to get it and like restore it. Is the last I heard. So that's a good mm -hmm. that's a good thing, right? We don't want to lose that car. That's for sure. But yeah, that car's been through a lot. Yeah, I think there was a fire at one point, right? Mm-hmm. And then a full engine replacement after that, and most of the back end. But it was brought back up to. Uh, to pristine condition i know it wasn't like the most screen accurate but i thought i thought it was pretty cool he had a lot of cool stuff on there that uh like personalized kind of time machine stuff that i thought was pretty cool you know and yeah. uh you know so yeah really unfortunate but but you know good to know that his car uh is going to be restored so looking forward to seeing that come back but anyway back to this thing here um so this <laughs> like the mr fusion it's just like a piece of pvc pipe or something <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, let's see here yeah i mean it's it's just the big plastic power wheels basically it's sought after mainly because you know it is a delorean time machine it's not a power wheels per se and, and if it were if it were there'd probably be a lot more of them out there this sort of obscure company i don't even know if they're even around anymore action products um oh it was purchased by the seller in 2021 so there you go it, it isn't the same one so <laughs> probably need to read these these listings <laughs> <laughs> oh man so when did this what year were these released anyway i imagine when back to the future 2 came out so maybe okay. 89 or something Wow. Okay, so that would make sense because that's when the JRL uh, remote control car uh, was released around that time, too. So it is a pretty vintage piece. Mm hmm. Be cool to find one like mint in the box, sealed. You know, assuming there was a box, and even what the box looked like, I don't. I wouldn't even know. Yeah, this would be kind of cool for a kid to play around in, and this one still works. One of the one of the bidders, or let's see here, <laughs> they're asking some funny questions, like still in the box. <laughs> All right. Um... I wonder if anything had to be assembled yourself. Yeah, I bet you anything. Um, there probably was some uh, some assembly required. I'm pretty sure the Mister Fusion probably had to be put in there. That's, that might even be mm -hmm. removable. Um, let's see here. Steering wheel probably had to be put on. It's got a pretty crazy rake to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kind of like, I guess, the, again, like trying to mimic the, the car from Back to the Future, the, the screen-used car, which definitely had a major rake to it, which I think was due in part to all the electronics and batteries and stuff they had in the uh, 
in the frunk, right? It weighted down quite a bit. Plus, they did something with the suspension, from what I remember. They changed out. Mm -hmm. They they did some customizing with that. I don't remember why exactly, but um, maybe it was to get the front end down a little bit. I have no idea. Because yeah, it wouldn't look as sporty, but it looked it looked fine, you know, in the in the movie. So let's move over to the uh, the real DeLorean currently up for auction here. I'll bring a trailer. Looks okay. How much have these cars been going for recently? Here, I'm bringing a trailer. It feels like it's been so long. I feel like the last time we did a live stream for bring a trailer was like in december or something december yeah i think so yeah. it's been it's been a while four months and i think the ones that did appear this year ended like on a weekday or something where uh mm -hmm. so we've got the last one sold just recently actually on the 15th uh for 67.5 it is a low mile example though so there's there's probably the reason for the higher, um, and I say higher, which actually wasn't as high like a year ago, right? 67 would have been considered right. kind of low compared to what we've, we're seeing cars go up for like in the 80s and stuff, right? Pushing 100,000. Then you had one in March that sold for 50, a little over 50. Um, again, another one in February, 53,000. And then you had a 5,000 mile example go for 67,000. Again, a low mile example in January. So, yeah, I don't know. And then in December, you had several that went to like the low 50s, one that sold for 44. Yeah, I remember that one. Yep. Yep. So, I think uh, this one that sold on the 15th, I think. Someone mentioned that it had been sold earlier. Oh, okay. It's an alumni, yeah. Yep. Oh, let's see when that one... Uh... Oh, back in November 2022. Sold for 79.5. So we took a cut. Over 10,000. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he didn't put too much into it. <laughs> right. Uh, he probably should have stuck a reserve on there, but I mean, he did pay quite a bit. I mean, it was seventeen hundred miles, right? And he put, you know, he brought it up to twenty five hundred miles, so uh, eight hundred miles on it. So he probably did some stuff. I'm thinking, um, but. Uh, Unfortunately, that's just how it goes. So that was in Wyoming. And... So this one, oh, it's interesting. This both of them were out of Missouri. So the last one oh. that sold was was out of Missouri as well. Yeah, it's unfortunately he lost quite a bit on this car. Yeah, I mean a low mile example, sixty seven five, not not bad, not too shabby. Considering you know over a year before it was way more than ten thousand over that price. Mm -hmm. Market is softening. <laughs> market market has softened. <laughs> it's not softening; <laughs> it has softened quite a bit. I mean, you're probably not going to see too many more of these cars break seventy thousand. Um. You know, with, with inflation so high, <laughs> uh, although it, it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, with interest rates, you know, higher than they've ever been in a really long time, I think uh, mortgage rates just went over 7%.
Yeah. You know, uh, car loans uh, follow suit. Uh, the stock market is actually pretty high as well, which is kind of a weird paradox. <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I can't figure that one out. Um, I think Wall Street is really banking on the, on a, a fantasy that, that the Fed is going to cut rates, and that's why they've got a lot of excitement. You look at crypto. Crypto's like way up right now, too. Like Bitcoin is at over sixty thousand, I think. I think it just wow. seemed like it was just around below twenty just recently. So <laughs> maybe a, a few years ago, a couple years ago, something like that. Anyway, so twenty five thousand for this one here. This will end in a couple of days. Looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the Carfax. It's got like only nine records. Um, going back to ninety three. <laughs> And there's this massive gap between 93 and 2011. So it probably sat. Um, right. In a garage somewhere. Mm-hmm. But 65,000 miles um, in 2012, they reported 64,000. So it hasn't really been driven hardly at all um, in over 12 years. So it's sat. For at least the last 12 years or so, um, sat quite a bit. It was only driven a few hundred miles um, sometime between 2012 and 2023, which is, you know, which is okay. I mean, you're going to expect that. A lot of these cars, they're going to, you are you know, you're going to have cars that have sat for, for stretches of time. That just means you need to be careful with that fuel system. Mm-hmm. You know, you just ha- kind of have to assume it. If you don't have records, I mean, this is, I would say there's like hardly any records on this thing. This is like a no record car. There's really, really nothing here. Unless there's some documentation uh, that you've got with the with the sale. And it's really just a bunch of brochures and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know what sort of other records. Like, I got lucky. Mine, mine included all of the records. But then, of course, the owners were very meticulous people. Uh, the original owner of the car, and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot. It does come with a window sticker, and it looks like a photocopy of the original window sticker. <clears throat> so that's uh, twenty six one seventy five. Jacksonville, Florida. Some rust issues on the frame. It's got some issues. It's got some frame issues. Some rust, yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, the suspension. We've got a lot of rust on those springs. Let's see here. Uh, so David Bublitz is saying that Video Bob has been buying some from Beverly Hills. <clears throat> Let's see here. Yeah, there's a little bit of rust going on here. Let's take a look at the frame. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see that the frame extension in the front. Mhm. And you got the front fan, the cooling fans. But, I mean, that can be replaced. Well, those A-arms. <laughs> mm. Well, they're not A-arms. Lower control arms. <laughs> Got to be right, right? Uh, yeah, the lower control arms in the front. And the uppers are, are also pretty rusty. So definitely an East Coast car, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you, got a lot of frame, you got a lot of frame rust. I can see that the epoxy has been... Uh, um, Pulling away. away yeah. Pulling away. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that's probably the original fuel accumulator in there. Wow. Yeah, it looks like the original Motorola um, alternator. And that's pretty rusty looking as well right there. You can see that. And in between the body, there's some rust there. Um, the original Roan Parish starter looks like it's got some corrosion going on as well. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, this is a typical East Coast car. They probably saw some outdoor time <laughs> while in storage. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully it's not a flood car. <laughs> that wouldn't be fun. No. Let's see here. Transmission looks okay. Yeah, not bad. November 81 build. Well, I would roll the dice. I don't expect this one to get a whole lot. Um, you know, with the, the frame. And there's not a lot of, you know, um, photos of the frame. I mean, there's some, <clears throat> you know, but you can't really... You know, I would have asked for more photos, I think. Uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to tell, really, the severity of the corrosion, you know, and, and other parts of the frame. But, I mean, um, he's got some undercarriage shots here. that isn't, They don't look too bad, you know. But I uh, would have liked to see what was um, over those air deflector shields, you know, to see what the rear part of the Trailing frame looks like. Yeah, right yeah, that kind of stuff. Shift linkage is pretty corroded, too. Um, I mean, this right here doesn't look too bad. Rear frame area. It's mostly the front that where you see the epoxy kind of receding from the edges, mm -hmm. you know. And that's usually where it's going to start because that's where you have the... Uh, at, right at the edge there is where you're going to see um, uh, the receding of the epoxy. Um Brake master cylinder leaks and then it starts corroding everything. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So what else is going on, Chris? <laughs> well, um, I got to hop off here. I'm visiting my parents this weekend. So. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. It's been yeah. fun as yeah. always. We gotta, I gotta get I gotta get down near neck of the woods soon. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We're gonna schedule a drive. Hopefully, well, you know, we're going to schedule the uh, the next drive um, and a uh, the nine, uh, Lion Estates 1955 get-together over at the filming location. So we do that once a year. Hopefully we can schedule something. We're looking at kind of June-ish now. So yeah. we'll get that out there and hopefully we'll see you, uh, if not sooner than that, then at the, uh, the next one. Cool. Cool. All right, Chris. You take care, man. Right. Thanks. Thanks a All lot. Right. Sure. No problem. Talk Bye. To you soon. Yep. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. That was Chris Miles. As always. So this one will end in a couple of days. Um, let's see what we got here. So there's some roof box issues with this one. <clears throat> so we'll see uh this one may not go for much i mean with all the corrosion you got some roof box issues this guy actually went out and t took a look at the car yeah roof box issues so that's uh it's merely lifting it's cheap and easy to fix if it's rusting out yeah it's not completely difficult to do but it's it's a you know it's not easy I, I don't know if it's an easy fix or not but i don't think it's that easy um well, windshield's not installed properly uh oh so there are some issues here so i guess we're gonna have to find out um yeah so We'll see what happens here, but not a whole lot of cars on Bring a Trailer these days uh, to to do any um, live streams for, and maybe it's just a sign of the times, or maybe we're just noticing that uh, you know uh, not a whole lot of DeLoreans left <laughs> out there. Everybody, everybody who's been wanting one has finally got one, <clears throat> and the supply is is a little lower. But we don't know. I don't know. I haven't really been following it too closely 
but only one per month on average here for 2024. Let's take a look here. And I like the, let's see, where's the, used to have a chart oh there it is so you can kind of see where things were <laughs> so this one showed up uh, the um, the the go-kart showed up here but you can kind of see where they're at and the pricing hasn't really changed too much over the past several years so if you go back to like 2021, you still see cars selling for the 60s. <clears throat> There's these <clears throat> outliers right here, like the Johnny Carson car. And then you have a uh, time machine, another time machine. Then you have the Nick Reed car here that took 240. So, but if you look like around here, um, you have a few that only a couple of us took, I would say about just for stock DeLoreans. Only three have ever gone over a hundred thousand. Everything else is within this band right here, like in the fifties, sixties. Sometimes you'll see one in the forties. Just depends on condition. I'm predicting that this one here, that's currently at twenty-five thousand, is probably going to. Um, I don't think this one's going to go over fifty. You'll probably see this one sell for maybe in the mid forties, low forties, potentially with the roof box issues. So if you're planning on bidding on this one here, uh, you definitely want to take that in, into consideration. Apparently there's some windshield issues as well. Um, but you're right, Dave. Uh, if every DeLorean that gets a good long-term home is a good thing. So hopefully whoever does land this one uh, will, you know, restore it. <laughs> it doesn't look super bad. I've seen, we've seen a lot worse, obviously. But there are some, some issues. There are some concerns with this one here that uh, I think we need to figure out. But anyway, so there's that one. And uh, yep, so that takes care of it, guys. Uh, back to this one here. I need to go back to that guy. So the Action Products Back to Future took 2,000, which I think is probably a, about right for this thing. And it looks like it was in pretty good shape. Um, Never, like I said, I've never seen one like in the box sealed or anything. So that would be kind of cool to see that. This is one of those ones that, uh, you know, is kind of a vintage piece from back in roughly around 89 or so. And it kind of came out with a JRL remote control car. And hopefully one day we'll be able to help Russ out. He's the DeLorean model collector to land one of these for his collection. Um, didn't happen today, but hey maybe in the future no pun intended anyway guys that kind of wraps up this particular auction live stream as far as what's going to be happening next on delorean tech we've got a few videos in the hopper uh, we are still kind of working on the zach delorean from dcs video i'm hoping to get that one out uh hopefully by the end of the month so i've been working with rich and tom from delorean midwest connection on that one uh, we've had to edit it down quite a bit, <laughs> unfortunately, but we are going to get it out. It was really cool, uh, interview that was conducted by Tom at DCS last year. So we are going to get that one out. That is probably going to be our final one. There is a, a, maybe a couple more DCS videos. Oh, there's the pog video that I want to get out too. And I haven't quite figured out how I want to release the pogs of DMC. I thought about releasing it in short segments because that's over two and a half hours long. And, uh, but I may just release it, you know, as a two and a half hour so that, you know, you can just kind of watch it. It's just editing it and all that. It's just it's very time consuming. And I've got a total of about four different YouTube channels that I, that I manage. And, uh, <laughs> This is just one of them, right? So those other channels, I've been working on videos for those channels as well. And obviously, I got my day job. So it's, it has been kind of difficult. I've got some other videos planned. Of course, we've got the Josh Shattenkirk LS DeLorean video that 
uh, is going to be coming out. So I've been working very closely with Josh on that one. And he has finally given it his seal of approval uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm just kind of putting the final touches on that one. That one's about ready to go. Uh, so we'll be hopefully within the next couple of weeks that one will come out. So that's a really cool video. Uh, basically, it just, you know, we go through the entire car, right? And undercarriage, kind of pointing out all the different little things that, you know, have never been pointed out on the car before. The LS DeLorean with that LS4 swap motor. He's got a bunch of really cool upgrades besides just the LS DeLorean, the LS swap. Uh, full brake upgrades. He's got suspension upgrades. A lot of stuff on the interior that we kind of pointed out. And then we go on a on a drive uh, in in uh, Crystal Lake, Illinois. This was just uh, during DCS. We did that video, and it was a really fun just drive around and and kind of punch it here and there just to see how it felt uh, driving that thing around. It is a really cool car. And it really makes me want to uh, get an LS swap DeLorean. Unfortunately, I live in California, so that's not exactly the easiest thing to do with our smog regulations here. So, you know, maybe one day when they, uh, if if they ever relax those for classic cars, you know, up to uh, the '83 model year, I'll be able to get something like that. I don't know. Uh, it was a really cool car. Uh, to to experience so um, one of these days you know that's that really is the future EV is definitely another option that I think would would help uh, in the future as well I know the community is pretty split on that they're split on LS swaps as well I think the community is pretty split on basically everything so it is what it is the important thing though is that I think we all agree that these cars need to be preserved they need to be you know they, we need to keep these cars on the road and however you can do that, you know, I, I think I support uh, whichever way it can be done. In some cases, you need to, these engines, they, they're only going to last for so long before uh, you're going to have to replace them, right? And a lot of these cars out there right now, the engines are not in good condition and they need to be swapped out. And if not with an original PRV, what are you going to do? And swapping is really um, the only option right to keep these cars on the road otherwise you just got a car that's just going to sit there and nobody's going to be able to enjoy it so anyway um the ella swap delorean video is going to be coming out um i've got some other videos coming out uh there's the delorean seat covers video from what a cole that i'm gonna put out there so the the results uh came through uh we did end up going to what a cole to pick up the seat covers uh, things didn't go as planned, unfortunately, there. I'm just going to leave it at that. There's going to be a video coming out, hopefully soon here, that kind of talks about what happened. And uh, hopefully there will be a resolution on that. Anyway, um, and I call, California Carb sucks. Yes, it definitely does. Uh, I don't really know uh, what the future of that is. Um you know, we've got our fingers crossed. I, I just consider myself lucky that the DeLorean, you know, as, you, as long as you've got a good example, the DeLorean is a roadworthy car. I mean, I've owned mine for uh, going on six years now. I bought it at 91,000 miles, and it just keeps running. And I, you know, I maintain it, you know. I, I, you know, I don't go out of my way to do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. You know, I just maintain it like a regular car. You know, I've upgraded the, the fuel system completely, the suspension. I've done a few little things with the motor uh, as far as like maintenance items, just replacing stuff, uh, sensors and things of that nature. I've upgraded the electronics on it. I've upgraded uh, to the solid state electronics from Dave McKean. You know, I've done a lot of other kind of superficial, like not so needed upgrades, like with LED lighting and all that kind of stuff, you know just to make it fun. Um, but I feel like, you know, as an odor of almost six years now, I can tell you that the car is a solid vehicle. I mean, a lot of there, you know, it gets a lot of bad press and I'm, I, you know, uh, and you might say, Hey, I'm biased because I love DeLoreans, but Hey, if I had problems, you guys would know, cause we've got over 500 videos on the channel, uh, working on the car, you know, before and after stuff, you know, whenever we do 
um, you know, a video, a technical video on the car, like doing something with the AC system, for example, uh, and all the snags we run into, that stuff is on there, right? It's all documented. We don't cut any of that stuff out. And um, there's never been a video where, well, <laughs> there might have been one uh, where, and it wasn't on my car, where we ran into a snag and we literally had to shut the <laughs> the installation down. That hasn't happened on mine. And I go in with these videos uh, not knowing what the end result is going to be. I mean, the plan is we just complete the upgrade. A lot of times we bring in Chris Miles, right, who's done a lot of work on the car and has done uh, a lot of the stuff on the DeLorean type car and other cars that we filmed. But there was one video, and it was the brake big, uh, the little big brake kit from Flying Miata. So Josh, Shatt we work with Josh Shattenkirk from LS DeLorean on that, and we obtained the kit, and we did an installation on DeLorean Destiny. That's Ramel and Daya's car, and uh, we were doing a full installation. We did a whole video series on that one, right? And I think the part three video was the full installation of that. Well. Just so you know, and there's a little little secret to that video, is that we actually didn't complete the installation as planned. We actually had to stop. And the reason why is because the rotors that we got, which was separately purchased from the kit, were 9-inch rotors and not 10-inch rotors. So I remember we were on the phone with Josh, and Josh was, was looking at the photos I sent, and he's like, hey, those are 9-inch. And I'm like, oh, man, so total facepalm there. We had to, to shut production down. Romel was good enough to get the replacement rotors and continue filming. He sent me the footage, and I just did some magic on the editing, and we were able to make it work, right? So the video came out, and everything looked good. Nobody caught the fact that in some of the scenes, the rotors are actually 9-inch rotors and not 10-inch rotors like you're supposed to have on the car. So anyway, there's a little bit of behind-the-scenes stuff that we had to uh, we had to fix. That was the only time we had to shut down an installation or you know a maintenance video or, or whatever on the car. Um, we'll be doing more of those. We've got some other videos kind of in the hopper as well, like the, uh, uh, the lower control arm installation from DeLorean Midwest, lower control arms, the stainless control arms that they've got we've got that one that should be coming out as well pretty soon that's actually on the stainless tech channel right now uh, if you want to take a look at that and then we also have one on how to replace the uh, the ball joints and the upper control arms the a arms so that'll be coming out as well we actually did those that installation on the same day that was a pretty fun one that's where we had to cut the ball joint actually i think we cut the lower control arm ball joint it was completely c so we had to cut that one off just to free it the, the original stock control arm from the suspension and we got that video up somewhere in on the channel as well so anyway that's what's kind of coming up from delorean tech once again uh thanks for watching our videos we really appreciate it and if you guys have any suggestions for videos in the future i know we got quite a few i i do get uh, a lot of requests for stuff uh that you know i i may or may not may or may not be able to get to uh, a lot of stuff that you know is just upgrades that um maybe i can't do to my car because of carb you know the carb stuff that we have to deal with here but a lot of times we do get a hold of folks that you know um, are planning on doing the installation and maybe can film it. I know Josh is going to be doing something on his car. I'm trying to remember. Uh, he was going to install something, and I asked him, "Hey, can you film that for me? Because we really, I really need to get that uh, that on the car here." And I'm trying to remember what it was, and I can't remember. Let me let me just find out. So Josh was going to do something to his car. And he mentioned it too. Like he got, uh, he got it. He bought a kit, and let's see. Um, oh yeah, the luggage rack. So he was gonna install a luggage rack on his car, and I don't plan on doing that on my car. And uh, since DMC now has the reproduction luggage racks, it'd be really cool to get an installation video on the channel. So that was one of the ones that uh, I reached out to him for. So we do that. If you guys are out there or watching this and you're owners and you're planning on doing your own 
uh, and you wouldn't mind filming it for the channel, that'd be cool too. We're always looking for so uh, you know maintenance or upgrade videos. Uh, so if you're you're interested in that, just reach out to me, DeloreanTech at gmail.com. Just send me an email. Anyway, guys, we're gonna wrap things up. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next live stream. And hopefully, it will be sooner rather than later because it has been four months.